human mind is probably one of the most diverse mechanisms we have ever seen it is where our ideas abound our emotions dwell it's where we discover who we are as people in this world it is also one of the most demanding mechanisms we have ever seen most of us complain that we become idle we don't know what to do we tend to get restless truth be told i do that i did it in the morning before i came here i didn't know what to do i didn't have anything to do so i got agitated and that is what i'm here to talk about today life tweaks for better weeks teenagers as most of us would agree we've always been stereotyped that we are over emotional we are angry that we can lose our cool over anything insignificant and most of the times people sugarcoat it saying it's just hormones you're growing up you'll learn to keep your cool but honestly tell me it's not really that we have a lot of other things that go out in our head that cause us to stress that make us realize that it's not always what people think yet we don't know what it really is i want to tell you all a story and i hope you all feel what i felt after i'm done till 10th grade i was a very quiet person i wouldn't talk to a lot of people i'd talk to probably five or six or i'd avoid that also if i could i'd bottle all my emotions up i'd make sure that no one could know what was going out in my head and it stayed that way but there were days when i got pissed as well and i couldn't hold it anymore so i exploded much like how a pepsi bottle does when i play when i you put mentos in it it explodes and the gush of the liquid is something that you find thrilling but this isn't in 2004 i was touring the country sri lanka and on december 25th i was visiting the hill station kandy come the next day when i wake up i hear 200000 people died because of a tsunami i was one of the few who wasn't affected by it and after that it was a frantic rush for me and my family to get to the airport and even after we did i had to wait eight excruciating hours before i could get a flight back home as they were wheeling in people who had lost their limbs who had lost their families and who needed medical attention first to be sent off to where they came now i'd like all of you to just stand up for one minute please stand up close your eyes please close your eyes and i want you all to imagine the scenario i'm taking you all through today imagine you are walking down perhaps one of the most beautiful places you have ever seen now imagine you had everything you could have ever asked for a loving family whatever your dreams were they are fulfilled imagine you are walking down that path in a second i'm going to come and cut your legs off i'm going to come and take everything that you ever had away from you you can't do anything about it you are going to stay there and suffer please open your eyes and please sit down this is what a man who was with me till i left for kandy i had luckily met him at the airport with my family he was sitting in front of me without his legs and he couldn't do anything about it he lost his family so when he told me this story i kept thinking about it i was 7 years old at that point of time and i was thinking about it why did it happen i mean everything was so peaceful i was at the beach the previous day of the tsunami and it just happened 
and I kept thinking about it, but as I was a smart kid, I didn't tell anyone about it because I bottled it up. Fast forward a few weeks later, I'm sitting in my room casually playing on my PS2. I'm playing Tom and Jerry. I'm Tom and I'm beating Butch up because he was going to take Jerry away. And my mom walks in and she tells me, Rohan, you've played for three hours straight. Please get out, stop playing, go and study. You have your exams coming up. Look at that. I've already played for three hours and I'm still not satisfied with it. So I start shouting at her. I'm like, what's wrong with you? I want to play. I'm seven. School doesn't really matter. Exams are later. I'll study later. And that tantrum went around for three minutes. Now, I expected my mother to shout at me after that. She didn't tell me anything. She told me to go back to my room. So I was really happy. I won the argument. So I started doing this. And I kept making that noise so my mother would realize that I was really pissed off at her. How could she come and ask me to stop? Two minutes later, my mom walks in with a huge pile of newspapers, leaves it with me and tells me, I want you to tear every single paper in this bundle. I opened my eyes up. Come on. Seven year old, your mom's letting you literally make a mess and no consequences. Dream. So I happily spent 10 minutes tearing every single paper to its last shred. I went later proudly to her. I'm done. I'm going back to play. And she has this wry smile on her face, catches my hand, makes me sit down with her and tells me, this is what happens when you start getting angry. This is what happens when you start losing your cool and expressing whatever it is in your head. And she told me this dialogue or this line which she always tells now whenever I do something stupid. She tells me, today it was me, today you shouted at me, tomorrow you'll do it to someone else. Imagine how they would feel. Now I've gotten angry lots of times after that. But what that small incident taught me when I was seven years old was that I needed a better way of expressing myself. <coughs> Excuse me. I need a better way of, ex of expressing myself. It's just not going to cut it if I just keep screaming at everyone or if I just lose my cool or I don't express it at all. Now, some people have devised beautiful ways of expressing their emotions. Some do it by music, as explained by Swati when she was talking. Some do it by art. Some do it by exercising. Some do it by writing about it, or some just plain lash out or tear papers. Or if you come to my room, you'd see me hitting my wall. It's quite fun actually, but if you do come in, please note that you will see dents on the wall. And please don't tell my mother, she doesn't know about it. Ideally, why do we stress? Why do we feel this feeling of powerlessness, worthless? It's because our routines are complete completely monotonous. We don't do anything different. We do the same thing again and again. I mean, I used to wake up early and please, whoever agrees with me, raise your hands after I'm done. Waking up at six in the morning, quickly getting ready for school, sitting there for five hours, two hours extra if you had an extracurricular activity, come back home, you don't sleep, you go on Facebook, talk to everyone else, go out, play with your friends, go out, tuition, come back, watch your favorite TV show, come back after that, dinner after that, YouTube after that, complain about how boring your day was, then complain about how we wasted time and how we didn't finish our homework, sit till three o'clock in the night, finish homework, finish studying for the test, go to sleep, wake up again at six o'clock in the morning. How many of you have actually done that? Please give me a show of hands. Everyone. So when I passed out of school this year, I realized I was really bored by it. I mean, it drove me crazy doing the same thing again and again without any changes. So what I decided was I'd make huge changes in my life. I said I would go for a jog every morning of the day. I still haven't gone for one jog yet. It's been two months since I said that. I said I would learn six languages at one stretch. I still have to start one. But I did make few big changes. 
I said I would binge watch TV shows every day. I finished seven shows in two weeks. But what happened was I lost a lot of energy doing that. So what I realized, and what my parents and everyone else told me, is that you can't make big changes in your life without expecting significant consequences. What's ideally better, and as most speakers have brought it up slowly in their speech, is that you have to make small changes. You must make the changes in your routine without affecting the entire structure of it. Smaller the change, the more exciting it becomes, because it's something different. And when it's something different, your mind is stimulated. And when your mind is stimulated, you feel alive, you feel happy. And lastly, we all complain that we can't make these changes. Especially as teenagers, we can't make it. Our parents may not let us, or leave that society may not allow us to make such changes, or circumstances don't. It's agreed. Circumstances may make different changes in your life. But if you, can't, if you give up so easily about making changes in your life, if you can't really stand up for what you believe in, what is the point of you standing here at all? Tell me. If you can't stand up for yourself, if you can't stand up in front of society and your parents and claim you want to make the changes that you know will make your lives better, why don't you stand up for yourself? True, you may not succeed at it, but you owe it to yourself to at least give it a shot. If you do, because if you succeed, you'll actually be happy with yourself. You'll be proud that you were able to stand up for something you believed in. Lastly, as Abhinav Shetty, one of the previous speakers, beautifully brought it up, we tend to overthink a lot. Truth be told, I've been doing it ever since I realized I was coming here. That photo over there, most of my friends say it is my best photo they've ever seen. I overthink that I'm not photogenic at all. So I constantly crib about not having a good photo of myself or that I'm not able to smile. And that drives me bad because I can't take a good photo at all because I keep thinking that. But luckily when I was at my friend's place without me realizing he took that photo. And that's the photo I sent for this one. It's the small things that matter. It's the small changes. It's the small ideas that you have in your head. And it's the small ideas that you push into your lifestyle. That's what's your small tweak. A tweak is generally a small adjustment or a small change. Don't think you can make big ones. You can't. None of us can. We can make small steps and change. If I were to put it as an acronym or what I really want to tell you all, three things. Acceptance. Accept that you are a vulnerable person. Accept that you are also imperfect. Accept that you are flawed. Because it is these flaws, these imper imperfections that you have that make you truly the person you are. I can't dance. I'm a two left, I'm left footed. Both. That's what I tell everyone. Because I know I can't dance. But I accept that. It is embarrassing to say it, but I accept it. I can't really dance that well, but I can speak well, according to everyone. I can write. So those are the imperfections, and those are my attributes that I love, the positivity that I have, that I accept. So, why do we always push ourselves down? Second, change. Small changes. You can't make big ones, but you can at least make some changes. And last, edify. Improve upon those changes. Improve upon the lifestyle that you have set for yourself. If there are any comic book fans here, please can I have a show of hands? Okay. This becomes an acronym. Acceptance, Change, Edify. ACE. If you're a comic book fan, ACE has a lot of significance. It's the name of Batman's dog. It's where Joker was born at the factory ACE fa Chemicals. And it's also a member of the Royal Flush Gang. Aside from everything else, there's only one thing that really matters. Become the ace of your own world. Forget the universe, forget everyone else, forget society, yourself. Be the person you want to be. Become the ace in your own mind, in your own universe, and for yourself, if not anyone else. Thank you.